Hi there, I'm Ekfer, and today I want to talk about a pulse multiplier. And a pulse multiplier is essentially circuits where you put one pulse in and you can get more pulses out. So multiple pulses out. Um, at, you're therefore multiplying the number of pulses you get. So we want that to be something which is, you know, controllable how many pulses we get. But um, I'm going to be talking about the circuit next to me. And, and the eagle-eyed amongst you might recognize this as actually a comparative pulse extender and a pulse extender isn't a pulse multiplier so why am i looking at circuit well we'll get into that in a moment okay so let's dive straight in okay so first thing i want to do is talk about this circuit as a pulse extender and the idea is if i turn on the lever that'll power the circuit everything lights up and you can see that here the single strength is powered is here is 15 because it's powered from the lever directly the comparator keeps it at 15 but as it travels from this dust to this dust it loses one signal strength and becomes 14. so when i turn the lever off that 14 is going to get passed through here and this will become 14. this will become 14. this one will become 13 and it keeps going around like that losing one signal strength every time it goes around the circuit so we can see that when I turn this off and you can see that's dropping down until eventually the circuit turns off. So that's our pulse extender. Now, how do I turn that into a pulse multiplier? Well, the idea is that if I give this a one tick pulse, then it's going to be long enough to turn on this comparator, which will power the dust. But as this comparator turns on, this one has lost its signal from the back. So it'll turn off. And then it'll get a new signal from this one uh, and turn on, but this one turns off and you end up with something that flashes. So let's watch that. There we go. And as you see, it stops as well because it's doing exactly the same thing. It's losing one signal strength each time it goes round. And so how many pulses are you going to get out of this? Well, when I turn it on, you see this starts off at 15 and it keeps dropping down and eventually gets to zero. So I'm going to get 15 pulses out of this, aren't I? And we can demonstrate that. So I'm going to use a uh, repeater here. We're going to put a dropper just there with a chest there. And I'm going to put some items into that dropper. And that just shows how many pulses we're getting. So I should get 15. And I do. But um, that's not very controllable, right? Because I, I, I seem to be getting 15 or nothing. Well, that's not quite true because if you see this one, this one starts at 14. So if I took my output from here instead, I'd get 14 pulses out of this circuit. And we can actually extend this. And as I extend it, every time the single strength drops by one, and therefore, I can choose how many pulses I get. So if I took the signal from here, I'd get eight pulses from this circuit. But that's really annoying because I've got, you know, a big long line of redstone dust and I, you know, that's not going to be very convenient. So we don't want to do it that way. So uh, what other methods do we have? I'll take a quick time out here just to talk about the, the, the redstone signal indicators I'm using because this video would have been much harder to make if I didn't have the ability to show you the signal strength, which is coming out of um, the redstone dust here. And this is a pack by a, a, a guy called Alex. He has his YouTube channel. I will give some links down in um, the description below. And he's done an absolutely amazing job of this. And this is only part of what he has created because he's created a tool called Sapling. And I'll again give a link. It is a behavior pack and a texture pack, but it has a whole bunch of stuff in it. So if you can see here, there's a whole bunch of features like 100% TNT drops. It's got different drops for different um, mobs. But it also has chunk borders, slime chunks, uh, redstone indicator. That's what I'm using today. You can peek into containers. So it's got an amazing, amazing amount of stuff in this pack. And it's really useful for technical players. I definitely recommend it. Go and check out Alex's YouTube site. 
subscribe to him, download the pack, give it a go. It's fantastic. Well, one way of doing it would be to say, rather than using a lever to input signal strength 15, I'm going to input a smaller signal strength. And I could do that by powering this block with a comparator. And if I have a sticky piston here with a hopper, I'm using a hopper. It, it could be any container effectively, but I'm using a hopper because with unstackable items in the hopper, I know that if I've got one in there, this is going to give me single strength three, two is single strength six, nine, 12, 15. Okay. So this is single strength six. And now if I um, push that hopper behind this comparator, it's going to power the block single strength six instead of 15. And what should happen if I reset this is I should get six pulses out of his circuit. So let's see that happen. There we go, six. And if I, if I change this to uh, say 12, then I should get another 12, make it up to 18 in total. Okay. So that's one way of controlling it, but um, it's kind of noisy, right? You know, we've got a piston moving stuff around and that's maybe not so convenient. Uh, and I think we can do better than that. So it's going to be slightly more complicated to calculate, but I'm going to just take this and I'm going to move it to here. And what that's going to do is it's going to compare the signal strength coming from this hopper with the signal strength coming through this comparator. And if the signal strength in, coming through this comparator is less than the signal strength from the side, this comparator will turn off and that will stop our pulses. So we've got to work out how many pulses we're going to get out of this. So when I turn it on, I'm always going to get a pulse because this just comes on. It's not got around to its comparator yet, and it's going to power my dropper. And I'll get one pulse. If this was single strength 15 in here, then when this comes around to here, it'll be single strength 14. That's less than this. And so I will get um, just that one pulse It'll turn off after that. So my calculation is actually 16 minus the signal strength in here. So if we make this six again, 15 minus six is nine. So 16 minus six is 10. So 16 minus things strength from here. That's going to be 10. And I should end up with 10 items in this chest. Let's test it out. And there we go, that's 10. So now I've got a silent way of controlling how many um, pulses I get out of this circuit. And I can do that from anywhere from, well, one, I guess, to 15 pulses. So that's a easy, controllable, simple to use um, pulse multiplier. Obviously, if you want to go above 15 pulses, well, technically, uh, you can use this to go above 15 pulses because you can power it from here. If I were to power this block, um, let's take these out and put it back in there. If I power this block instead of this one, then when I first turn it on, it's going to power this. Okay. Uh, and so I get an extra pulse out of it. So in theory now, if I give this one tick pulse, I should get 11 items in here. And I do. So one of the things about these circuits is um, they, they can be a bit confusing. So you've got to be really, really careful both where you power it and where you take the output from. And that changes the number of um, pulses you're going to get. Or if you're using it as a pulse extender, how long that pulse will last. But uh, this is quite a simple way, I think, of giving you anything from one or zero to 16 pulses and using a pretty short, pretty small circuit to do it. What we haven't talked about though is how we give that one tick pulse because I'm not always going to be using um, a lever and switching it on and off really quickly. So we need another way of doing it. Well, uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. One would be to use a, a bell. If I put a bell here with 
and observer watching that bell there's a special property of bells which is that they will only trigger on observe when they turn on and not when they turn off so now if i trigger that bell it'll run my circuit and when i turn it off i don't get anything okay so it's only when i turn it on but uh, that's a little bit noisy so maybe we don't want to do that so another way of doing it would be to use a dispenser and if i put a dispenser here with a powder snow bucket in it and now i can use a lever or you know i can power essentially this dispenser however i want and when i turn that power on the observer sees it when i turn it off nothing happens when i turn it on again the observer sees the powder snow going away so again that's just a simple way of triggering your circuit and you could trigger it here you could trigger it here uh, depending on how many pulses you want out of it so that's all i've got for you today and it's a simple comparator based pulse multiplier i hope you like it i hope it's useful for some of your circuits and um, i will see you next time thank you very much